Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? The last time we saw this Mac SE30, I had finally gotten it up and running. As part of fixing it up, I swapped out the original hard drive for a SCSI to SD adapter. If you're not familiar with those, I think they're really cool. They're basically a PCB that converts from the SCSI bus that a vintage Mac like this or other retro computer would want to use for its hard drive and allows you to use a standard SD card for mass storage instead. They're very flexible, they're incredibly fast, at least compared to the speed of the original drives, and they add an additional bit of flexibility in that, well, you can remove the SD card and swap it out for another one. So if you want to experiment with different operating systems or different versions of operating systems, it's really easy to simply swap the SD card instead of having to keep wiping the drive and reinstalling everything from scratch. Now, I've got a project that I've been working on using this machine that's kind of along those lines. There'll be a video coming out about that in the future. But I found it a bit tedious on at least a classic Mac like this to have to keep taking the machine apart every time I wanted to swap the SD card. I had installed the SCSI to SD on top of the floppy drive, which is kind of the best place for it, but yeah, it makes the card slot itself fairly inaccessible without disassembling the computer. So I got to thinking and came up with what I think is kind of a cool solution. Let me show you. The Mac SE and SE30 were the first compact all-in-one Macs to include expansion card slots. There's a pin connector on the motherboard and then this opening in the back where if the card has external connections like a network or video port, you can get access to it. You know, I'm probably never going to install an expansion card in this machine, but that opening caught my attention and I realized pretty quickly that would be a great place to install the SCSI to SD. So I whipped up kind of a proof of concept bracket. I used a piece of acrylic that I roughly cut to size and then bent using a heat gun to form kind of a mounting flange that can go where this bracket is. So it was just a matter of kind of putting it all together and mounting it inside the machine. The cable management actually ended up pretty nice too. Everything laid in and, and stayed neat and tidy. And well, it works great. It's a really easy and convenient way to get access to the SD card and micro USB port without having to disassemble the entire computer. Now, it only took me about an hour to kind of fabricate this bracket. It's not perfect. I got a little too impatient with the whole heat gun process and I ended up bubbling the plastic just a little bit on the bracket. It's just a cosmetic issue, but I also realized that this could be of interest to other retro Mac users, especially those who own SE30s, which is kind of a cult classic amongst Mac collectors. And so instead of forcing you to just go out and figure out how to make one of these brackets on your own, I redesigned the entire thing in CAD so that you could get it 3D printed. I also took the opportunity to include a couple of improvements. Namely, I cleaned up the openings on the back for the USB port and SD card, and I also built in the standoff so that you don't need to come up with spacers inside the bracket. All you have to do is find the right kind of machine screws and nuts to hold the whole thing together, and that's it. I'll include a link to that 3D file down in the description below if you want to download it. All I ask is that you don't sell it for crazy amounts of money. If you want to make some extras for friends or whatever, that's totally cool. Just don't turn it into some sort of crazy retro computing empire on me. Yeah, I don't think you will. Anyway, I'm really happy with how even just this kind of quick and dirty bracket turned out. It's way convenient and it's working great for the project that I'm working on with this one. And I hope that that 3D file will work out well for you too. Anything to help make the retro computing experience better and smoother is great, in my opinion. Anyway, if you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.